Thank you, all of you who took the time to come here and um, express your concern over what goes on in you know an incredibly wonderful place that uh, you know has had a big impact on all of our lives. I'm sure. Uh, I work for the Utah Department of Transportation, and uh, it's UDOT's responsibility to keep the road in Little Cottonwood Canyon safe from avalanches. The reality of the situation, however, is that the same avalanche paths that affect the road also affect inhabited structures in Alta and Snowbird. Avalanches that reach the road in the upper canyon often run past the road and impact inhabited buildings. We try to keep this to somewhat of a minimum through our avalanche control program. The principle behind avalanche control work, as most or many of you know, is to initiate numerous small to medium-sized avalanches throughout the course of the winter, rather than allowing uh, a few large and destructive avalanches to occur naturally. It is our intention to prevent the large avalanches, or at least to postpone them, that in the past have destroyed much of Alta. Snowbird and Alta are perhaps the only places in the world where artillery is used to protect buildings rather than to destroy them. However, in spite of our best efforts at forecasting and controlling avalanches, large destructive avalanches will continue to occur. And most likely they will be the result of avalanche control work. As most of you also know, UDOT relies on military artillery to carry out avalanche control work to protect the road and the inhabited structures. It's an important uh, thing to keep in mind that where we place this artillery is not simply random. Uh, we, artillery is placed in positions uh, primarily where the gun crew will not be threatened by avalanches that they may initiate. It's also important to be able to access these uh, weapons uh, easily and safely in all weather and avalanche conditions. It's important to be able to access a number of avalanche starting zones or target points from one particular location. And we also have to meet the re distance requirements for the storage and the firing of ammunition. And because of these reasons, the choices in Little Cottonwood Canyon of where we place artillery is severely limited. It is necessary, therefore, to fire over <coughs> the inhabited buildings that we are trying to protect from avalanches. As you might imagine, the Army does not particularly like this practice. Uh, their concern is that there may possibly be a malfunction with the ammunition and that a round could fall short of its intended target and land on or near an inhabited building. Those of us in the local avalanche community uh, recognize this as a possibility, but we also feel strongly that the buildings are much more threatened by avalanches than they are by the possibility of a short round. However, some of our concerns fall on somewhat deaf ears in the military and the Army is strongly encouraging UDOT to replace the recoilless rifle, which is the uh, weapon system that we have at the uh, Peruvian Ridge Mount at Alta, uh, or to find alternate means to, to deal with the avalanche problem in the Wakatan Canyon. Regarding the uh, weapons and ammunition that we use, they're mostly of Korean War vintage. They're fairly old, but they're extremely reliable. One problem we do have, however, is the supply of ammunition. And the only available uh, 105 millimeter recoilless rifle ammunition uh, that there is out there, we have in storage at the Tooele Army Depot. This represents perhaps a four or five year supply. And once that supply is exhausted, we will be forced to switch to an alternative weapon system. In the future, UDOT hopes to incorporate other types of avalanche control devices in order to reduce or perhaps even replace military weapons. One alternative among several would be to access many of the avalanche starting zones that threaten the town of Alta via chairlift. This would allow artillery to be replaced 
with hand charges, and perhaps more importantly, would allow for skier compaction on the slopes between Toledo and Grizzly. As many of you know, skier compaction, when combined with regular explosives control work, greatly lengthens the return interval of large destructive avalanches, even more so than just by using explosives alone. It does not completely eliminate them by any means, but it means that instead of occurring every 10 or 15 years, perhaps that interval would be lengthened to 25 or 30 years. Current UDOT plans, the ones that we are looking at now and planning for the short-term future, call for replacing the 105 millimeter recoilless rifle located on the Peruvian Ridge Mounted Alta with a 105 millimeter howitzer. Uh, the howitzer has a plentiful ammunition supply that we are more or less assured of, of having for many years in the future. It also satisfies some of the Army's concerns about using the recoilless rifle for overhead fire, which means firing over villages uh, and how to buildings within the town of Alton, the village of Snowbird. The Flagstaff chairlift, which could be an effective tool in helping to reduce the avalanche threat to portions of the town of Alta, is not a project that UDOT is currently promoting or seeking funding for. <coughs> and that's about all I have. I would be happy to try to answer any of your questions that you have in the time I have left here. Yes? Over, over at Flagstaff because they're using it across from my house and it's wonderful. Um, that's a very good question. We have looked into, uh, for, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the Gazex, it is a, uh, it's a, an avalanche control system that uses a mixture of propane and oxygen uh, to set off a, a, a large uh, explosion above the surface of the snow. It's very effective. It's a fixed uh, facility. Um, for those of you who have hiked up the South Ridge of Superior, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, um, but it is very effective. It reduces things like overhead fire or shrapnel concerns. And when they work, like all things mechanical, they don't always work, but when they do work, they are, they are very effective. To cover that area between um, Flagstaff or Toledo and Grizzly Gulch uh, would require uh, about 25 Gazex exploders, seven of the, uh, the uh, enclosures that house the, uh, the gases and the control panels. Uh, the cost would probably be somewhere between uh, five to six million dollars. Uh, it would be a suitable alternative uh, as far as operational concerns go. Um, but once again, if you have hiked up the south ridge of Superior, you've seen the Gazex. Um, they don't look like limber pine or dug fir. Um, but it's, you know, it, it is certainly an alternative and it is being considered. <coughs>